Hello, welcome to the Ink Club. This is Jose. I would like to review this latest colored ink reader, Box Nova Air C with you. I've now spent two weeks with it. I brought it right when it released in Hong Kong. And although I have its twin spudder, the Nova Air, and they shared exactly the same design, but this time with a different color, it's a matted black. I love the finishing, this is classy, it's a few good to touch in hand. And most importantly, this Nova Aerosy is fitted with the latest uh, generation of color E and screen, the Kaleido Plus on sale. You can see the design is identical here, the button placement, the weight, the thickness is almost the same, I don't feel any difference in hand. And that is a very good sign that I can use all the accessories that I brought with the Nova Air onto the Nova Air Z. I've now used the Nova Air for around 6 months now and I have to say that it's one of the best e-reader that I've ever used. I love the design of Nova Air for its sleekness, the thinness, the very classy, very good to hold, uh, metal housing. I just cannot resist upgrading this very very nice design with the latest color ink screen Kaleido Plus on sale which claims to have a very significant improvement over the riblins, the saturations, the contra, or the display of black and white in color. What makes this decision even easier is that I can use all the accessories that I brought with the Nova Air onto this Nova Air C. And I love these uh, protective sleeves with physical page button really really much. It has to be one of the best of all time. With these protective sleeves reminds me of the Kindle Oasis first generations which I do think the design is perfect. The tactile feeling of turning a pages by physical button just cannot be matched by swiping. I can say this protective case with physical button is the biggest reason why I decided to upgrade from box Nova Free Color. And I do like other aspects of this design very much. This is very light, very good to hold, very thin. Um, and it's upgrade with the latest generations of color e ink, the Kaleido Plus on sale, which claims to have a significant improvement over the previous generations. And box pricing strategy this time is very aggressive. This is only about 450 US dollar in Hong Kong, so just can't wait to try it out. Although I like this design very much, but there's obviously one missing feature here, is the physical home button. Without the home button, I'm left with only free navigational gesture in the system settings. And I have to set this gesture as back at the left, home button in the middle, and the multitask switcher on the right. I can easily jump back into the book that I'm reading by a swipe on the right. But why would I say I'm missing the home button in the middle? Because on Nova Free Color, the home button was by default set as the back. So I now have three options for the navigation gesture. I will set home on the left, the multitask switcher in the middle, and for the gesture area on the right, I will leave it for the very important options to trigger a full screen refresh. You can see while I'm browsing after a while, the ghosting on the screen is becoming more and more noticeable. If I have the full screen refresh options on the right gesture area, I can easily trigger the refresh and clear the screen of ghosting and enhance the readability of the screen immediately. Alternatively, you can trigger the refresh uh, in the navigation ball feature, but I just don't like that eyesore on my screen all the time. About the weight of this Nova Air C, according to the official information, this is 235 gram. I weighted with a kitchen scale, it reads about 270 gram. There's a noticeable discrepancy here. The Nova Free Color weight 273 grams, uh, slightly a little bit heavier than the Nova Air C, but in hand it feels a little bit lighter and easier to hold, maybe due to the plastic housing. I read with the Nova Air C every day for about an hour while commuting, and it weighs uh, similarly to a 200 pages uh, paperback, so it's not too heavy, it definitely won't cause too much fatigues to the wrist. 
But if I'm going to use it with the page turning sleeves, I would definitely lay it uh, on the back of my backpack while sitting and read it. It will feel much more comfortable. Let's talk about the most important accessory that come out of the box with the Nova Air C, the Wacom EMR Stylus. It looks stylish, it's not too heavy, not too light, the balance is great. Uh, but there's one crucial missing feature on this stylus, is it doesn't have an eraser on it. So when you want to make a correction while you're writing, you gotta jump to the top of the screen to select the eraser, then jump back to the area that you're writing to erase the stroke. It's definitely not as intuitive as you with a, a previous generation of uh, box Wacom stylus, uh, which is cheap looking and plasticky, but it does have two eraser on it. You can erase a stroke by pressing a button or turn the pen around to use the eraser on the end. But most of the time, I will use the Lamy L Star EMR stylus instead. It is the best on the market and the closest resemblance to the writing experience with the fountain pen that I can find. Right now, on to the hardware inside this Nova Air C. We have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 665, a mid range SoC, which is more than adequate for the daily usage as an e reader. A small upgrade from the Snapdragon 636 we found inside the Nova 3 color. And I never think we need the top of the line, say the Series 8 of uh, Snapdragon inside an e reader, because the task we're handling is not that demanding. Most likely we are going to say open PDF files only on the e-reader, we are not going to do video editing, photoshopping on the e-reader, so a mid-range SOC is more than enough for the task. Let's be honest, the bottleneck of the performance or user experience of these e-reader now exists on the screen on it, not the hardware inside it. As long as we don't have a revolutionary improvement on the e-ink screen with flashes away, the user experience will be more or less the same. My only quibble about the hardware is the amount of RAM that we have inside the Nova Air C. Last year, we see Box uh, releasing several 10 inches model with 4 gigabytes of RAM, and recently see a Big Me, another e-ink reader manufacturer, releasing a 10 inches model with even 6 gigabytes of RAMs. As one of the latest top of the line model in the Box e-reader lineups, I'm expecting at least 4 gigabytes of RAM inside the Nova Air C. That would make it a little bit more future proof. In my daily usage, I frequently jump between the factory reading app, the Neo Reader, the Notepad, and I will be having a browser at the background to do some research as well. If in this process I'm jumping here and there, making a lot of nooks, more RAM will surely make this much more smoother. Although I would say it is already quite smooth at the moment, but after one or two years of use, I guess the bottleneck at the RAM will significantly impact the performance of this reader. Now we move on to the most exciting part of this review about the display. In front of us, uh, the Nova Air C is in the middle, the Nova 3 color on the right, the previous color model from Box. I also put the physical copy of this uh, issue of National Geographic on the left for good comparisons. With these close-up side-by-side comparison, I would like to show you how the color would look like on these color ink screen as versus the physical copy in real life. In Nova Air C, we have a new dual tone black light as on the Nova Air. So we have the warm black light and as well as a cold black light. While on Nova 3 color, we only have the white cold black light. And now we have set both readers on the maximum cold black lights for comparisons. You can see here that both of these readers are on the cold light maximum. And still, the Nova Air C are a little bit warmer than the Nova 3 color. And now I'm going to turn on the warm black light on the Nova Air C to maximums too, to just to show you how would it look like. You can see the color is even more warmer uh, than before, so it's going to distort the color tone quite a lot uh, if you compare to the Nova 3 color on the cold black light only. You can see the distortion of color on the next page where there's a map. 
The warm black lights on the Nova Area Sea has turned the ocean in the map uh, into a yellowish patch. While on Nova 3 color on the maximum cold black light, the color reproductions on the map is way more accurate. You can also compare the color on the physical hard copy with the color reproduced it on these screens. You can see the color on the physical copy is much much more richer and more concrete and more vivid than on these screens. The color on this screen still can't be compared with those on the a printed hot copy but what you have here is a way more convenience uh, a lighter reading experience which we don't have to worry about the bulkiness of a physical copy in your backpack this is a very pleasant surprise that I find that the uh, dual tone backlight on the Nova RC is very very useful for reading in complete darkness I usually read for 30 minutes before I go to sleep. The white black light on Nova Free Color is a little bit irritating in complete darkness. On Nova Air C, I have the options to turn on the warm black light instead. You can see from the picture, the warm black light makes the screen way less irritating to my eye in complete darkness and I can read a little bit longer than usual. Honestly, I've never expected there would be a significant improvement on the screen quality on the Nova Air C, but this dual tune black light has opened up a new option for me to read in darkness, and it comes as a very pleasant surprise.